Hello and welcome to episode 22. This is terrible. I don't know what episode it is. God, I've got to restart that. Hello and welcome to episode 22 of the Witch in Its podcast. I'm Shy, I'm a witch and I knit and I do other crafty things like sewing and embroidery and crafts and art and yeah. <laughs> this is my podcast where I sit down and talk about it. Last week I had a one hour long episode. Uh, I usually don't do that, but we'll see how long it gets today. Speaking of last week, thank you so, so much to everybody who left uh, a message. Uh, you're all fantastic in the comments and I'm just so, so, so thankful for all of you. Thank you so much for all the support. It, I'm, I'm just blown away. Uh, thank you so much. And also, sorry that I am absolutely terrible at responding. Uh, I just get really overwhelmed uh, and I don't really know what to say and I feel bad if I can't reply to everybody and then it just gets huge and I can't reply to anybody and it's just terrible and it spills over on Instagram where it wasn't even personal and it's just ah. Uh, but I I'm going to try to sit down and reply to you and if I didn't reply to you it's not that I don't like you it's, it's just that maybe at the time I don't really know what to say but I'm very sorry about that <laughs> and thank you again to all the very nice people who left very nice comments and yeah I just love you all so much it means the world to me thank you um, and also welcome if you're a new viewer there are a few new ones again a very warm welcome to you and a very warm welcome back to everybody who's a returning viewer um, yeah uh, I don't really have a lot to talk about today it's it's been a couple of weeks again I'm sorry I'm terrible at this, but I'm trying. <laughs> but I have been working on things, so I've got some things to talk about where it comes to uh, crafting. But I don't really, I don't really have a lot to update you on with like real life chatter because there's no real difference from last time. So uh, I'm just going to dive straight into what I've been working on, and I am going to start with the FOs. Um, so yeah, last week, <laughs> last week, last episode, I showed you a yarn <laughs> that I um, got, as you do with yarn that you didn't already have, but <laughs> uh, I got this skein of Limbine yarns in Revenge of the Harpsichord, which is cool, and I think I said this because my dad built up harpsichords and I'm about to help him paint one um, like the soundboard. I don't know if I said that but like the soundboard. Uh, if you don't know what a harpsichord is, uh, here's one that my dad made and uh, here's a picture of a couple of flowers that I've, I've been practicing on and they're all going to go on the soundboard which is this. <laughs> it's it's um, a historical musical instrument. Um, it's a bit late for my uh, my historical historical interests. I'm more of a medieval person, but um, I think it's amazing. And Wollenbein has a colourway called Revenge of the Harpsichord. So of course I had to have it. Thank you again, Kristen, so much for the yarn. Um, I decided to turn it into a cowl. Um, I think the colourway, I'm going to just show you, it's all squished up. It's so gorgeous. It's so, so gorgeous. It's golden and it's like got speckles of red and there are a couple of speckles of green somewhere I saw uh, and like tiny speckles, really tiny. And it's full of hair. I'm sorry, both mine, David's and the cat's. I don't know why really sorry about that but um, 
it's it's just gorgeous and it's got some dark speckles of like dark brown and it's wonderful and so squishy it's on the nouveau base which is a single ply merino 100 percent it's beautiful i love it and i chose to knit i'm going to bring up ravelry i remember the name of the pattern but i don't remember who made it because i'm i'm i have made notes but i forgot to write down the, the designers i'm terrible um god clearly i didn't have enough coffee today this is a very good cowl indeed that's the name of the pattern uh, and it is by Liz Abinant, Abinante, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that, but um, this is the cowl, am I holding it upside down? I am, I think, no I wasn't, this is the right way, no this is, that, that was the wrong way up, this is the right way up, and it is a cowl with, it's got like, um, obviously a lace pattern, where it's like a, I want to say like rhombus, lattice kind of look up here and down here and in the middle it's more of a leafy pattern. I don't know if you can see that but it's it's gorgeous and I was pressing through looking for a nice pattern to make with this because I wanted to make a cowl out of this because I, I, can't, my, I can't really see myself wearing this anywhere else than around my neck like that. I'm not going to put it on because my hair is doing stuff today. But yeah, around my neck it's going to work uh, but I can't really see myself wearing it as as a hat or anything. I, I could have made uh, mitts but I had a whole skein so I wanted to make something a bit bigger. So I made, I made a cowl and this is a free pattern on Ravelry. Uh, it is, I mean it, it used up a bit less than uh, than 100 grams of fingering weight yarn. There are several like size um, sizes you can pick in the pattern for it and I made the large size fingering weight. You can also make a DK weight and you can make a slightly smaller one where I think the, the leaf pattern is just one repeat and this is two repeats. So yeah, I made that and I decided that I mean, <laughs> oh god, this is so jumbled up. I'm really sorry, I'm so disorganised. Um, clearly, again, I didn't have enough coffee today. I really should get some caffeine in me. But, um, what was I going to say? Yes, knit-alongs. Uh, I am kind of double dipping this one in both the pumpkin make-along, uh, which is host hosted by... Once Upon a Corgi and Stitching the High Note and this is very pumpkin-y and pump it especially makes me think of pumpkin, pump, pumpkin spice which I love I had pumpkin spice coffee for breakfast today uh, I make my own pumpkin spice, there's no syrup or anything I just put spices in coffee and it's wonderful but um, I'm both in that make along with this one and also the glorious gold make along by Caroline slash Dundanet slash knitting vicariously here on YouTube. Um, so yeah, I finished that one. I did not weave in the ends and I did not block it yet, but I will do that and then I will take some pictures of it, like for my finished object and also for the threads. Um, I'm really excited to wear this though. Uh, my battery is dying so I'm soon gonna change it but um, sorry if, if everything goes blurry it's because the battery is um, dying but yeah um, super excited to get to wear this because it's it's super it's only like September uh, but maybe maybe at this point in September it starts getting cold every week every year I just can't remember because last year was so freaking hot but um, it's already like we had frost this morning. It's crazy. I love it. I really like it. I'm really enjoying it. But it's it's getting quite cold, so it's like time to bring out the uh, the, the the jumpers and sweaters and cardigans and and the 
and the socks. Oh look, the socks. Um, yeah, I, I need to get on hand washing all of my knitted socks because I like hand washing, hand washing them. I just need to get around to doing it. But yeah, um, cowl. Again, it's the very good cowl indeed by Liz Abinant or Abinante. I don't know. Um, sorry that I can't say your name. Um, next FO is a big thing. It's sewing, hand sewing to be specific. Uh, I finished and now I know what it's called in English. It's a smocker. Smocker. I finished my Viking dress. Uh, well, sort of. I need to do something about these things that are just sitting on the inside. But here we are. It is big and gorgeous and these straps should should be like that. I don't know why I'm trying to show you like this. Here's a picture of me wearing it where I also have turtle brooches. Oh well, the animal head brooches, but this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like when you can't see it worn. So I have some things to talk about about this dress. I'm just going to... <laughs> this is not going to help you see it. And I'm not going to try it on for the podcast because because makeup and everything. Um, but you can see it's done, and I can show you that all of the seams have been felled, and I'm so pleased with how it turned out because you can't see it at all from the front, like from the from the right side out. It's, it's I um, I've gotten places with my felling of seams. I love filling seams. It's the best part of making of hand sewing garments. Felling the seams. It's so much fun. If you've never tried it, you should. Because like when you get the hang of it, well even before that, but like when you really get the hang of it, it, it just makes everything so much better because it, it's like the, the, the garment is flat at the seams. You don't get this awkward like, you don't get, you don't get that when you iron it down, but like you don't get the awkward like in the seam where, where the fabric just whoop it just it's just perfectly flat and beautiful and when you do get the hang of it you can't even see the stitches and it's just oh I love it I love doing it but yeah um a couple of things I have to say about the dress um that the dress <laughs> as it were is it's long it's very long. Uh, smuckers are usually uh, a bit shorter from what I know uh, and then you have like a dress under it but I don't have a dress to wear under it yet. Uh, what you see me wear under it in this picture is my shift which in itself which in itself is a bit shorter so I can't really um, I, I couldn't make this thing shorter to uh, show the shift under because it goes to like mid no a bit it goes to a bit above my ankles and that's too short for this thing so I made it full length so that I when I do have a dress to, to wear under it which is probably going to be my next project not gonna lie um, when I do have a dress to wear under it I'm just going to shorten this thing and have it work <laughs> with with a dress under it. I don't really know what colour dress I should make. David thinks I should make a black dress. Um, I'm tempted, but that will require me to wear a lot of bling and big fat turtle brooches uh, because, like, black is a colour only quite rich people wore. Uh, but there's already black in this, so I guess I need to go for a rich person outfit anyway for this, um, which I don't, I don't mind. The only thing that's like not really fantastic about that is that it's quite expensive. I don't own turtle brooches, the one I'm wearing in the picture. Uh, they are borrowed from a friend who's also 
a Viking. Uh, <laughs> so I don't really, um, I don't really know what to do with that. But um, I finished the dress. I am really pleased with it and yeah it's really comfy it was really fun to make and I totally want to make more and this is the thing I wasn't going to start Viking reenactment and Viking like sewing because I know that as soon as I as soon as I dive down another rabbit hole I'm just going to get really suckered into it and I just want all the you know all the bling all the accessories all the like outfits and I'm already like that with like 1300s but everybody else in my friend group is doing viking and David is doing both 1300s and viking and I'm like yeah I want to I want to do it too and and they all like convinced me that I should so here we are I got suckered into it I'm really like I want it all now and it's all your fault God damn it! <laughs> but yeah, it's I don't really mind. It's fun. Um, but all my money goes to fabric. I just want to make all the yarn crafts, all of the fibre arts. I want to start spinning. I want to try weaving. I want to try everything. Especially in like historical ways. Just so interesting. But I've got one more FO to show you, which is also for the pumpkin make along uh, run by Once Upon a Corgi and Stitching the High Notes, which is a tiny little cross stitch. I didn't cross stitch in years. I was hugely into cross stitching as a child and like early teens, I used to cross stitch all the time and make lots of things like lots of tiny little things and um i just i just really enjoyed it and then i just completely dropped it i dropped that i dropped knitting i dropped sewing really i dropped pretty much everything uh when i got together with my ex who was <laughs> very abusive and not really good for me uh and i just basically dropped all my interests uh to pick up his interests um so making this was like i zoomed through this i wanted it i wanted it to like take longer because it was fun i'm gonna show you um if i if i do the thing when i do this and i focus the camera i'm not gonna get myself in focus again so i'm just gonna put a picture of it here this is terrible but i, I literally cannot see what I'm doing. Um, and I don't have glasses for that because I can't afford it. Uh, it's terrible but I can show you this. Uh, but yeah I wanted it to take longer because it's it's just so much fun but it, it went so fast and I want to buy the other uh, that the, the person who made this was called I bought the pattern on Etsy like a week ago and started it straight away um because yeah no i think i think i bought it on monday and david printed it no it was last friday it was a week ago it's by cinnabunny on etsy i will link her etsy in and the listing for this pattern she's got two other really cute patterns for uh, monsters, Halloween -y things in mugs that say boo and I really want to make all of them because they're adorable but yeah uh, I made this one I had to alter it because this is supposed to be like a candy cane but I made a very noob mistake and um, only counted to like how broad the pattern is to the pumpkin where it, the pumpkin ends so I cut like I've got I've got like three rows too little to make an entire candy cane so I had to make it just a pe peppermint stick um but hey it works and also I didn't have all the colours and it was right before I got paid so I could only buy new colours for the pumpkin so this is all like stash and it's not exactly the correct colours but it works but I'm I'm gonna make another one just because 
I want to make one with an entire candy cane and I'm going to buy um, floss for the correct colours for the mug. But yeah, I made that one and it's adorable. It was a lot of fun making this and I had a blast cross stitching again and I just want to cross stitch all the things now. It's terrible. I don't need more crafts. I really don't. But speaking of not needing more crafts, because I've got too many things already, uh, I am just so itching to try spinning. I just want to spin. I, I want to spin all the pretty fibres. I've been watching a lot of um, uh, podcasters who also spin, and I've been watching people with the electric eel nano wheel and I've been watching drop spindling tutorials and I just want to try it. I've got fibre. Uh, I got fibre for Christmas quite a few years ago now uh, from my mum. I've got like this bag of alpaca. I think I showed it in my like stash box thing like early on in the podcast. Uh, but it, it's just the bag of like naturally brown alpaca. Uh, I'm not going to start with that because it's alpaca, but um, I found this place that, that sell really pretty bats and I am so, so close to just buying it. I don't have a spindle, but I know I can make one and just for trying. So I'm going to make a spindle, uh, like a top wall sp spindle. Um, and try it and if I like it I'm probably going to buy a spindle and if I really like it I am really tempted to buy the electric eel nano wheel because it's so tiny and so cute and I love tiny and cute things um, if, if it's tiny and if it's cute and if it like it's a real thing um, you can bet I will want it and hey, who doesn't want to make their own yarn? I know there are a lot of people who don't like spinning. <laughs> but but I've been interested in trying for so long. That's why I got the fibre for Christmas in the first place, like, I think six or seven years ago. Um, but, um, I, and I've, I've been ogling. Sometimes in second-hand shops in Sweden, they do get, like, spinning wheels, like the old big wooden ones. And my mum had one in the attic, it was broken. Uh, but I, I, like, in the old house, we didn't have space. And we didn't know how much space we'd have once we'd moved. And last time I saw a spinning wheel, it, was, it wasn't even expensive. I think it was, like, 25 quid. And um, I, I couldn't buy it because I didn't know what a living situation would be like. And my mum couldn't keep it at their place. <laughs> it was like bad enough when they had to have my Swift because we didn't have space for a Swift. We do now, uh, but still, it's it's terrible. And I could have just gotten a spinning wheel for so cheap, but I couldn't because I, well, I couldn't take it home on the train either. So, <laughs> but a nano wheel thing, it's, it's so tiny. And, and you can like keep it anywhere and I really want one but David is like mm, well maybe you should actually try spinning first you know if you like it and I'm kind of thinking the same thing it's a bit um, it's a bit big of an investment and a bit wasteful to buy something where you don't know if you're gonna like it uh, if you're gonna like it so I'm gonna wait with that but if I like it, I'm going to totally get one when I can, because it's adorable. And I want to spin all the pretty things. And that was a very long tangent about spinning, and I don't even spin yet. But hey, um, I'm going to just check my notes quickly. Uh, oh, I forgot whips. This is... I, I completely glossed over whips and went straight for plans for the future. I'm so sorry. I've, I've only got one whip. Um, but I've got one finished sock. No, it's not finished because it's an afterthought heel. I forgot about that. Um, but I, I started a pair of uh, shorty socks last time. Uh, that's going to have a pico edge and an afterthought heel out of this Sweater Forward Frost yarn. Um, 
and I got to half the second sock before my yarn ran out. <laughs> so I've been like scaring the interwebs for another ball of this yarn. And I think this colour is discontinued because it's been on sale everywhere and it's sold out and I, I bought this yarn on sale as well. Um, but I found it finally yesterday so I ordered a ball of yarn and I hope it arrives quickly because I really want to finish these. But that, then I have this problem that I've got another ball of yarn with like this colour and it's, it's pink and, and red. And I like pink and red, but I don't need 50,000 pink and red socks because I've already got this yarn. I've already got this yarn in my cock socks and now I'm making a pair of shorty socks. I don't know what to do with the rest of it, but I'll figure something out. Um, but yeah, this is no, no pattern, just straight out of my own brain. Um, could write it down as a recipe I guess because it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's a pico edge and it's an afterthought heel and a, you know um, what's it called Kitchener toe. So um, pretty pretty simple sock. I'm gonna go back to plans for things I want to make. Um, the pumpkin spice mittens by Skein Deer are probably going to be my next cast on um, if I can go and get some yarn for it, which I hope I will soon. Um, again, probably uh, again something for the pumpkin spice cow mal. It's a ma uh, it's a make along. It's a mal, not a cow, um, because I love Halloween. I love pumpkin spice, everything, I'm very basic. Uh, I've never had a pumpkin spice latte from Starbucks because because we didn't have Starbucks in Sweden until like a couple of years ago. And I decided I don't really like Starbucks because everything's too sweet. So I just make my own, uh, my own pumpkin spice coffee, which is wonderful. But I already, talk I already talked about that. Well, I'm stumbling over my words so much today. This is gonna be a nightmare to edit. I need to talk slower. Maybe I didn't have too little ca caffeine, <laughs> but <laughs> <clears throat> I plan on buying some Roma to make those mittens. Roma phenol. And I hope to have them cast on for next podcast. I'm trying to talk a bit slower so I don't just stumble over my words so much. Um, that I am going to do and I am going to pick out a pattern uh, because I want to make, uh, like every year for a few years now, uh, well a couple, I think two years, uh, I've been knitting my best friend a pair of socks every year and sent him, sent them to him. Uh, so I'm going to pick another pattern for this year and pick some yarn for that. I think I'm going to pick the, um, can I check my queue? Because I'm terrible and I can't remember things. Aha. Uh -huh. The Viking Ugla, uh, Viking Ugla, Viking Ugla, uh, by Age Strick, um, socks. So I'm going to get some yarn for that. Actually, I do. I'm, um, I have, I'm going to get some yarn for that because <laughs> I've got one of the colours I want to use for it. So um, I'm going to make a pair of socks for him. I hope he's not watching because I want them to be a surprise. But um, Raph, if you saw that, please just forget all I said about socks. And if you don't like the pattern, tell me. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, shut up, Phil. Um, I've been making him a pair of socks for a couple of years now, so I want to make another pair this year, so. Uh, and also I want to make myself a pair of mitts because, like I said, it's very cold, suddenly. Uh, it's, it's like autumn. And I love it, but I need mitts because I need to wear something around the house because I get really cold, I can't use my fingers which makes it hard to knit 
and type and do anything with my hands it's, it's not that they start hurting I just can't do things with them I can't they, they, they get really slow <laughs> I can't do things fast and I can't knit and I can't I can't use my hands properly when they get cold and I have very I have very bad like blood circulation in my hands and feet so they're always cold to begin with and add that the house gets a bit cold and it's just a nightmare to try and use my hands so I am going to try and make the pair of mitts which is also like a frog I had I did cast on a pair of mitts uh, a couple of days ago but the pattern was like 60 stitches for here and 50 for around here on size 2mm needles with fingering weight and it was huge on me. I could literally fit both my arms in that so uh, that didn't work out. Sadly I think I need to do something on like 40 stitches for up here. Uh, I don't have very big arms and yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't see them getting a lot bigger in the near future, so uh, I need to, I, I want to make like a pair of mitts from somebody else's pattern because I, I keep making my own things and never uploading them to Ravelry or anything and I just want my Ravelry pay, pay, like projects page to be full of patterns and pictures, but I can't when I just make my own patterns and never, up and never upload them to Ravelry is a problem. Plus, it's fun, following, it's fun following others' patterns and like, I don't have a podcast to just be like, hey, I made this pattern which I'm not writing down and hey, I knit this sock straight out of my own head and I didn't write it down. It's, it's a bit more fun to showcase others creativity on something that you knit from their pattern in my opinion um not saying it's bad designing your own patterns and talking about it on your podcast because it obviously isn't but i personally would like to uh, not just knit off the top of my head because i want to talk about other people's patterns so um, I need to try and find something else and if I really can't I'm going to try and knit uh, the mitts I made for my mum again but in the yarn. Uh, I knit, um, they were again with pico edges because I really like those, <laughs> they're cute and a thumb gusset and stuff so uh, because I was thinking about making that a pattern for Ravelry um, I just didn't get around to it so yeah, um, I did not touch my tablet weaving at all for the past couple of weeks. Uh, first it was too hot and now I've just been, I've been in a very lot of pain. I've, I've had a really bad back for a week so it's just like I get tired, my back gets really tired every day. I don't know why. Um, so I haven't really been feeling like strapping something around my waist and pulling it taut by leaning slightly back and stuff. It hasn't been something I've been wanting to do with my body this week. I should probably pick up yoga again, maybe, maybe that will help. Um, but yeah, um, I haven't touched that so I can't show you because there's no progress at all and um, I don't have any new cast-ons because I literally bound this off two days ago and yesterday I only cross-stitched and finished that thing. So I don't really have anything except for <laughs> the mitt that I frogged, but I frogged it so it's it's not a mitt anymore, sadly. But yeah, um, that's all I have for fibre content. And I don't really have any updates for life and things going on content because it's pretty much the same as last time if not slightly worse which I'm not going to go into uh, so um, again I wanted to thank everybody for your support on the last video 
um, um, life is life is all over the place. Um, I did see my psychiatrist and they're writing me over to the DBT unit. I don't know if that's going to work out. We'll see. I don't know how long I'll have to wait. And I still don't have a counsellor. She was going to bring it up and see what they think. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what's going on with anything and it's a pain, so. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, life goes on, I guess. And I am still here, still making things, which is what matters, I guess. So, really excited because my sister-in-law and good friend and I were like my sister-in-law slash good friend and I are going to try and dye some yarn soon. We ordered some undyed yarn. I've got some undyed yarn. Uh, so we're going to have a, a field day with that. I don't know when, but it's going to be a lot of fun and I'm totally going to show the results of the dyeing. Uh, I'm not, probably not getting into dyeing to sell. Uh, I'm just really really curious I want to try and dye my own yarn because why wouldn't you want to try it at least once uh, so with spinning <laughs> but like spinning is my current very deep rabbit hole that I am in uh, I haven't started I don't have anything for it except for that bag of fiber but I'm just so 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 wanting to try it yesterday I usually don't get like, I want to do this two days ago. Uh, I'm usually like, well, I, I would like to try this. Uh, but sometimes with like fiber arts and in particular, I just get like, I want to do this now. And especially when it's like with um, tablet weaving, I could easily make my own tablets. So I just did and tried and it was fun. And with spinning, I know I can easily make a, um, a spindle <laughs> like a very simple spindle and try it so I'm totally gonna do that I just need to buy a dowel because I've got everything else I think so um, yeah exciting exciting um, but yeah I think that's pretty much it uh, for this week I, I, nothing else happened we went to the Viking market was a lot of fun. I didn't buy anything except for um, except for like a handful of glass pearls for my Viking bling. That's the only thing I bought. I wanted to buy yarn, but I didn't. <laughs> I ordered yarn the other day, but it's not here yet. So um, that's that's it. I've got no no other stash enhancements. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna end it there. Uh, nothing else is going on. So um, yeah, I um, will see you again in probably like two weeks. Uh, we'll see if I made a spinner. I almost said not a spinner, a spindle. <laughs> By that time, and if I've tried spinning at all, or uh, we'll we'll see where I am next. Uh, next episode but yeah thank you so so much for watching and for sticking around for my podcast and yeah I will see you again very soon I hope as soon as I can have a lovely weekend and week and two or three after that until I see you again bye